Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing an evidence-based approach to neck strengthening. More specifically, in this video, we're going to be looking at the sternocleidomastoid, so generally speaking, cervical flexion. Now, before we get too far into the strengthening of the sternocleidomastoid or cervical flexion, let's do a brief review here of the anatomy of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is shown right here. Now, the origins are inferior here. And don't forget that the sternocleidomastoid inferiorly is a two-headed muscle. So over here we have the sternal head. This originates off of the superior surface of the manubrium, okay, the superior part of the manubrium. And then over here is the clavicular head. This originates off of the superior part of the medial third of the clavicle. And then as you go superiorly, these two heads blend and they go up to the insertion up here on the skull. So one part of the insertion is on the mastoid process right here, okay, of the temporal bone, and then they also insert here on the occipital bone, that is the lateral half of the superior nuchal line. Now, sternocleidomastoid is innervated by the accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11, and also branches of the cervical plexus from C2 to C3. But really what's important to understand here are the actions of the sternocleidomastoid. Now, when it contracts bilaterally, so both left and right at the same time, the biggest thing we care about is lower cervical flexion, which basically amounts to the entire neck coming forward. So the chin coming towards the chest or the sternum. You also do get a little bit of upper cervical extension, particularly at the adeno-occipital joint. We don't really care about that. And then there's a little bit of sternoclavicular elevation. Again, we don't really care about that so much. The big thing is lower cervical flexion, and we will come back to that in just a second. Unilaterally, if you contract, let's say, the left one, it will facilitate ipsilateral lateral flexion. So it'll a facilitate tilting of the head toward the side of the sternocleidomastoid that's contracting. But this is also big. It will facilitate contralateral rotation. So if I'm looking at my left SCM, it will facilitate right rotation. And you can even see that as I rotate my head right forcefully, you can see the left SCM is flaring out and vice versa. If I contract the right SCM, it'll facilitate left rotation. So it's ipsilateral side bending, contralateral rotation. Now here's another important thing to understand about the lower cervical flexion when it contracts bilaterally. If I just do this, that is not getting SCM. Okay, so if you are trying to strengthen the SCMs, you don't just do this, okay? What this is doing is just allowing the head to come forward due to gravity. You're not actually doing anything with the SCMs. What you're actually doing is using eccentric control of the cervical extensors. Okay? If you actually put your head or hands back here, you'll actually feel the, um, these muscles back here, the splenius muscles, um, and maybe even a little bit of the upper traps contracting eccentrically to control the head. You're not actually doing anything with the SCMs here. So unless you actually add some manual resistance or use a band, um, if you're not using anything like that, you actually have to be in supine to actually get any strengthening effects of the sternocleidomastoid. And that's what we're gonna see in just a couple of minutes here. So for strengthening cervical flexion or the sternocleidomastoid, we're gonna start with the basic exercise. That is cervical flexion isometrics. Now this can be done in sitting or standing. I think sitting is the preferred position. And remember, cervical flexion is just tilting your head forward in this motion, bringing your chin closer to your sternum or chest. So if I'm gonna do that isometrically, I'm gonna stick both my hands up on my forehead and I'm just gonna resist that movement manually, completely balance it. Again, no net movement. That's the most basic cervical flexion isometric exercise, but there's other ways that you can do this. One way is by biasing the left versus the right sternocleidomastoid. The way I would do that is remembering that the sternocleidomastoid when contracted unilaterally gives you contralateral rotation. So if I wanna bias the left one, I'm gonna rotate my neck to the right and perform the isometric there. And by the way, this isometric force is flexion. So tilting down, we're just doing it in a rotated position to get this left one. If I wanna do the right one, I'm gonna go and rotate my neck left and isometrically resist flexion. So that's how you can bias one or the other. 
Other thing you can do is do this in different positions. So I could tilt my head back a little bit and do this here. Or I could tilt it down a little further and do it there. Most of the time we don't do that. I will usually stop with the rotation bias. This one and this one. When that one is pretty easy, there's no reason to linger there. And if the person finds that pretty easy, you should progress that. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. So the problem with cervical flexion isometrics, and this goes for any isometrics, is they only go so far. Your neck can only get so strong with doing those exercises. We need to progress to different types of isotonic strengthening where the neck is actually moving. One of the best ways to do that with the sternocleidomastoids or cervical flexion is to actually go through that movement. Now, you do not have to start here in an extended position, but the basic idea here is you're going to just do a neck sit-up. Feel those two muscles working on the front, lower down with control. Some people would call that a neck sit-up. Sometimes it's a neck crunch. But the idea here is we're just contracting both sternocleidomastoids bilaterally. You can, of course, add in some rotation there. So as I'm coming up, maybe I want to get the left one, so I'm going to add in some right rotation. I can also bias the right one by getting some left rotation. And that rotational component we can add with any one of these exercises that we're going to do here, with the possible exception of the last one. Now from here, I can start adding manual resistance once this gets a little bit easier. I would recommend starting only with concentric resistance, and you're going to do that using a fist. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the same neck sit-up, and you're going to apply resistance on your forehead, but you're going to let your neck muscles win. So you're gonna allow it to come up, okay? And then lower back down. Once that becomes easy, and of course there's no pain with that, you can start adding in the eccentric component with resistance. So again, manually apply resistance here, but then when you come down, let your fist win. Because eccentric exercises are often associated with delayed onset muscle soreness, don't be surprised if the next morning or, the, or later in that day, you have some muscle soreness in the sternocleidomastoids. You can also add some resistance in the form of a weight. You can use a plate like this or a dumbbell. I prefer plates because the hole in the plate, you can kind of stick right on your forehead and you're using your hands here to hold it in place, but you're not allowing your hands to assist with the movement because we want to put all of that in those sternocleidomastoids. So again, let this come back with control and then use your neck muscles to bring that up. One of my favorite ways to train the sternocleidomastoids is actually with a thick resistance band, sometimes called a monster band here. When you're doing this for the sternocleidomastoids, you want the anchor point to be high up. So a great place to do this is on the top of a squat rack, or if you have one of those adjustable hooks to raise the hook up pretty high. So that way, when it's coming down, it's angled down towards your forehead at approximately a 45 degree angle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this right on my forehead here. If it bothers your skin, you might wanna put a towel here just to protect it. But if you're fine, then we'll continue with this exercise. Now I've got my hands here and my fingers are looped over the band on either side. That's to prevent the band from slipping off because the tendency is when we kind of come up into extension on the up part of the movement, the band may slip off. So the fingers here are just to hold that band in place. But again, the resistance that I'm giving is provided totally by my sternocleidomastoids. So I'm getting into a staggered stance here. You may not be able to see it, but my right foot is about two feet in front of my left. Again, that's just for balance here. And then what I'm gonna do is let this come up a little bit with control, crunch down, feel those SCMs contract,
come back up and repeat as desired. Now, with this exercise, you can also add in those rotations to bias the SCM on either side. So again, if I wanna bias, let's say the left one, I'm gonna rotate right as I crunch down. If I wanna get the right one, I'm gonna crunch left as I come down. And so on and so forth. Now the last SCM exercise here is probably the most challenging. This is gonna be a closed chain cervical flexion exercise. You're gonna need something preferably soft, but not too soft like a pillow, maybe soft like this Bulgarian split squat stand right here. And that's where your forehead's gonna go. Now, again, when we typically do cervical flexion, it's open chain, meaning as I flex the neck forward, the chin's going toward the chest. In this case, more or less, we're thinking of the chin as being static and we're kind of pulling the chest toward the chin. So it's closed chain from that perspective. I'm going to put a couple fingers on these just to keep them down, but I'm trying not to use any of my arms here for support. I'm trying to put all of this in those sternocleidomastoids. What I'm gonna do is put my forehead up on here and I'm gonna allow this with control to fall into a little cervical extension, but not too much and then crunch my chest towards my chin and come back. As I feel able, I can take one hand off and then if I really want to get fancy, I can take both hands off. I would save this exercise for the tail end of your progressions. This is definitely the hardest one. Make sure the banded resisted exercises you can do with realistically no problems, no pain, no compensations. Once those are okay, then you're probably good to try this, but definitely don't start with this one. In fact, I would actually make an argument that the progressions I've shown in this video are probably the most logical order to do them in. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding about how to strengthen cervical flexion or the sternocleidomastoids. Join us in the next video when we take a look at cervical side bending. After that, we're gonna look at cervical extension and then finally cervical rotation. And also keep a watch out for the video where we talk about strengthening the deep neck flexors or cervical retractors. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.